Well, we've just thrown ourselves into a pretty bad situation. Because I uh, put John into a battle that I sh shouldn't have, uh, he's looking at a pretty big risk. He's stuck in a long-range battle against an opponent that can hit him pretty hard, and he's at less than half health, so... Uh, yeah. The good news is that if he survives, there is no way the enemy squads are going to make it through the battle. Now look at this. Look at this, uh... Yeah, that's half of their health in one shot. I, I'd still rather not take the charge fire from the enemy, though. So with, with John's health so low, there's pretty much zero chance that they're going to shoot at my squads. Now, we've noticed that the enemy can usually get three shots with a four-leg, and thanks to that charge fire, it is guaranteed that I won't survive if I get hit by all three. So survival is up to a roll of the dice. Well, obviously I'd reset if I lost a unit, so we know how it's gonna go, but... So yeah, uh, that, that's one of the reasons that I think John is better at killing squads than AFWs in general, which is because squads have uh, lower health, it's more of a test of how, um, how much damage you can deal in one burst. After all, if you can kill the enemy in two or three shots, they have fewer opportunities to pull their troops back if they're damaged. Now... I beg your pardon. It's uh, quite unlikely that the enemy will miss a shot at this range, and given that they like to aim until their accuracy is pretty high. Like, that was a hit even though I disrupted their aim with my own shot. Ah, uh, a little longer and my squad probably could have taken that AFW apart with their rifles. Well, at any rate, there's not much left of the enemy AFW, but... Also, John definitely cannot take part in any more fights for a long while. And that's going to be a problem because, although Kinsado is almost ready to fight again, he's pretty fragile too. That's one of the reasons I like Ryoko as a squad killer. She's Her armor is good enough that she can often handle several engagements. Now, the reason that this uh, encounter is different from the one where I had John try to take on that medium AFW is that she only needs one shot to finish off the enemy, so I can afford to aim a little bit more, and wow. Apparently I should have aimed more than that. Uh, 
Oh well. That's fine, she has plenty of maximum attacks. I haven't really had to use too many of them. Also, is that enemy moving forward? Yeah, definitely is. And that's... That's an interesting bit of AI programming. Like, I guess they're willing to try to put the enemy out of its optimum range if there's even a chance that they can survive that way, which is actually a really nice touch. I like that. Makes the enemy less predictable in some ways. So, kids, I'm sorry, Kinsato just implied something interesting, which is she is trying to make contact with someone fairly high up in the enemy ranks, so we shouldn't rule out that she's actually in league with the enemy in some way. Well, we know how these games work, and she's actually kind of crazy and murderous, but for all we know, that might be an act. So, uh, I think Kinsato has the right idea. Now, don't get me wrong, Yoko is really good at finishing off enemies. We, we've seen her at work a few times in the past. However, I think Emilio now handles that role better because his specialty is shooting at, at short range and he's a little more reliable with his punches than Ryoko is because he doesn't have to use that maximum attack for decent damage. Although having her fight enemy squads is also really weird use of her machine because she doesn't actually have any skills that are especially effective against squads. And her gun doesn't hit super hard either. So here the main decision is whether to recover in place or to back off first. And a part of the problem is that he doesn't have any squads with him that are really good at recovering an AFW. If if Weizsäcker could move forward and uh, tank a couple of hits, that'd be different, but he's not in range, so there it is. So I did not quite understand what John was saying here, which is why I answered the question yes, but John's basically asking, hey, aren't these uh, really badass special forces supposed to have machines that we haven't seen before? And the answer is, <coughs> uh, as Weissager put it, Anti-AFWs are already basically the newest thing, and besides which, their uh, current machines seem to work just fine. And John probably al almost unveiled a national secret right there. I'm fairly, ast I'm fairly sure that those reinforcements are time-based. Now it's going to look weird moving Weissegger away from the enemies that just appeared, but I, I, I uh, had kind of a hunch that enemies are going to appear on the other side and they're going to be more dangerous for reasons that I already mentioned. I hadn't played this mission in a while, in a while so I didn't know if they'd appear basically right next to the base, but this game does weird things sometimes and I couldn't really afford to take a chance with that.
the only trick was that uh, I I thought that someone else could probably use the village recovery more. Like J Jun's troops are incredibly beat up. And I think so are Ayana's. Well, we all know how this one is going to go. Just take a couple of steps forward and boom, combat over. And this is the, another reason that Ryoko, well, I feel she's better as an anti-squad unit, because enemies love to attack her, especially when they have a fresh set of squads. So she just tends to wind up in the right situation for that role. Now that I think about it, she has the uh, weirdest kind of machine of all of the people in my uh, in my army. Because she's pretty good at close combat and medium range, but not short. She especially doesn't want to be at short range when dealing with enemy squads, because then she has to use her machine gun, which is pretty awful. So in retrospect, I probably should have, have had her move off of the village and have Kinsado move onto it so that he could get the free troop rec recovery. Because he definitely needs to help more than she does right now. It would also free up uh, a space for Emilio to move forward. I believe this is their last dodge action. Or, well, actually I uh, didn't bother to check how many maximum attacks this enemy pilot had. Which is why it wasn't, it's not such a horrible idea to just fire a quick shot and see if I can get them to use another one. I wonder if there was some experimental build of the game where every enemy had at least a couple of maximum attacks. Whew, and if you think the uh, enemy shell advantage was bad... Actually, most of the default maximum attacks are not super amazing. Like, quick fire is okay. Uh, dodge action doesn't actually hurt you that much. From the, from the AI perspective. Of course it's very useful for me.
I would not want to uh, face a situation where every anti-AFW had quick move, though. So in this situation, it would probably be best to dodge, because um, if the enemy only... or... yeah. If the enemy didn't get much more damage on me, I'd probably be able to recover fast and get back into the fighting in a reasonable period of time. The key is to try and keep track of the enemy uh, load gauge, and especially if they brace themselves for firing at short range, because that means they're shooting at the AFW. Oh, yep, there it is. They probably don't have more than two maximum attacks, so th this worked out okay. Ooh, that's really dangerous. I mean, I didn't have to be... There was really no reason for me to do that, because I probably wasn't going to load another shell. And this is where using all of those maximum attacks earlier really uh, causes problems, because... Kinsato probably has more battles ahead of him, and he only has a couple left, which leads to this situation. Where now he's at less than half health and he's gonna have some problems. And just like that, both of my anti-squad units are now going to have to take some time in the back line for repairs. It's probably, it's almost certainly best to move Weisegger back to the other side now because um, on the northern side I have plenty of anti-armor power, that's not the problem. Whereas the other side is a little bit sparse on that. The upside is that after Ryoko finishes off that light AFW, Emilio will be able to move up and um, play linebacker for the team. He still has plenty of maximum attacks, so I'm sure he'll do fine. Now this is really dangerous, and Kinsato would have been in this situation even if he was in the village. Except he'd have more of a land advantage, but still. The enemy might not even have attacked him in this, in that case, because whoever's next to, him, next to him would have less of a terrain advantage and possibly draw the attack instead. That would be much preferable to what's happening right now. And I do not trust Kinsato's ability to deal a lot of damage, especially at night. So once again, this, this is a problem that was caused by my mistakes. I can't blame the game for this. But I feel like um, that's fine. I, I don't really get upset over something like that. It's the game being completely fair.
Also, we're finally at night time. Or pretty close, anyway. So we should see some more enemy missed shots, which is always good news for us. I expected more than two light AFWs to show up. However, one of them is at a pretty dangerous place because it might just take a diagonal straight for my unoccupied base. I don't quite know how their AI is designed for objective situations like this. And right now I'm trying to figure out whether I should have Kinsato also pull back and recover because that's going to put him out of battle for a long time. Not quite sure if I can afford that. But uh, on the other hand, really, what choice do I have? I can't risk losing him. Well, I think it's a good idea to keep Emilio, I'm sorry, not Emilio, Ipe more or less where he is because that light AFW is almost certainly going to take the road, so he's going to have something to do. And I can have someone more suitable to long travel go into the mountains and intercept the other one. Now this was kind of a tough decision because I brought illumination shots for just this kind of situation, but since the enemy's already damaged, the mechanics will probably uh, be able to put it into rapid punch death range without much of a problem. I forget whether I mentioned this before, but nighttime just doesn't only reduce your initial accuracy, it also uh, lengthens your aiming time. Most accuracy reducing effects are like that. Otherwise, people like John would be godly no matter what happened in the battle. Like, smoke, sh smoke shot would basically mean nothing to him. I just uh, realized that if the enemy doesn't have repair, check fire could be pretty useful for keeping them at medium range when I'm when I have her in an anti-squad setup. Would be especially nice for anti-AFWs, which usually have cleanup but don't always have repair. And that takes care of that. I 
I think that particular exchange also highlighted a problem with Kinsado, which is... <clears throat> If you want to avoid putting him in a position where everyone attacks him, you need to sort of uh, have him attack from the side or wait for the enemy to move first. Except that that means he's the one who attacks, so the enemy can attack him right back. And yes, this definitely seems like the work of a spy. However, if there is a spy, if we're following the rule of drama, the first guess at where the spy came from is pretty much always wrong. So, even though it makes the most sense, we're going to rule out the prison camp for now. Okay. Now, this medium AFW is one that I stripped before, so... Emilio should be able to finish them off. This is going to be kind of a test for the build, considering that... Uh, the enemy isn't that damaged, and... Of course, th their armor is the best armor. We'll see how it goes. The situation does seem to call for the heat shell, considering that I uh, definitely can't afford to be stingy with the damage dealing effects in this situation. It would be very annoying if the enemy escaped this alive, like a certain other medium AFW in this map, and in this situation I wouldn't be able to follow up as easily. I'm kind of curious about whether it would be better for me to bring an illumination shot squad instead of the heat shells. Okay, that definitely did it. I, I think heat shell is still good because Emilio's uh, Close combat accuracy is not affected by, oh, pretty much anything. So, maybe Illumination Shot would be kind of wasted. We'll have to sort of observe some more battles of his and work things out, though. If the enemy was at full health with their shield, maybe the situation would be different. Uh, well, what I'm saying. I just described a situation that's different, and I said maybe that would be different. What's going on? Also, yeah, looking at this situation, Kinsato definitely suffers a lot from enemy special shells, and even normal attacks and enemies that hit him back after he moves, so I think giving him a supply would to increase his AFW health recovery would be better overall. Something to remember for next time. Oh, they're bringing heat shells on their light AFW. That's going to be tricky when I need to strip them. Well, unless, of course, I have Ayana do it. 
That that seems like a good idea. Yeah, their heat shells will probably not do that much damage in a long range battle, I'd say. Also, I noticed that they don't have repair. So, since none of their squads have repair and Ipe has some extra maximum attacks to use, which is definitely a luxury, um, breaking their weapon here will make Guyana's job easier. And just in general from now on, since more of my characters have the ability to disable the enemy somehow with maximum attacks, it's a really good idea to check for enemy repairs. Because if they don't have it, you can do stuff like this. So, um, we'll see how exactly the follow-up works out in the next video. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I'll see you next time.